Sup, 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 guys, this is Baseball Offer FPC, and today I've got another custom Knots zombie gameplay video for you. And your first reaction might be, wait, how could this be? Episode 5? Shouldn't episode 5 have been like 8 months ago? And of course, my reaction to that comment would be, yes, of course. And that is why I'm going to explain to you why you are seeing this video as episode 5. Now, I had previously done The Simpsons as episode 5 back early on when my channel first started. However, if you have watched that video, it is probably one of the most horrible quality videos that I have put out to date. That is a fact that I'm not very proud of, as you, can, as you might imagine. And so, I am redoing this Simpsons video for two reasons. Number one, to fix the quality, because in the previous video, the audio got off around maybe three minutes in and there was horrible pixelation across the screen completely crappy viewing experience so that was reason number one reason number two is the fact that I did not beat it that time that is something that has haunted me to this day and so I went to remedy that so I have come up with this video of me beating Simpsons solo so I hope you enjoy this video and I finally just I finally got around to doing this. It's been a while. I, I agree, but I present to you episode five of my World at War custom Nazi zombie gameplay videos, The Simpsons, which was created by Holty and has some special coding and scripting done by Tom BMX, who is the most win guy ever. So, anyways, this map is a very challenging map. I'll say that right off the bat. This is probably one of the most challenging maps out there. I'd rank this up there with uh, Death, Cage. Uh, those are the only two difficult maps that I can think of right now. But it is a challenging map. Um, there are a ton of ris risers in the areas. Um, it makes it difficult to train. Not, It's not too difficult to train. However, there are a lot of times where you just get screwed over really badly by accidentally running on top of a, uh, a riser and then you get stuck and then you get killed. A lot of bad, very bad coincidences that happen, so that makes it very, very unpleasant sometimes. So anyways, a couple minutes have gone by in this video and I kind of need to catch up on to what I'm going to be talking about. So anyways, we start out at the very beginning. We've got an artillery strike, which is almost like a nuke. Not exactly. It works kind of the same way. You've got shells coming in they kill I'm not exactly sure if they'll kill you I've never actually used it before so experiment with that try it out it's for 2k so have some fun with that you've got the Bible ending right off the bat for 30k press F to go watch family guy for 30k so you already know where the Bible ending is no hidden secret there we have the car 98k as well as the bouncing Betty's out front here and I try to get the Bouncing Bettys right off the bat. That allows me to place down the maximum that I possibly can. And the Bouncing Bettys, just, uh, they're, they're good to place around. You get a couple extra points from them. They'll slow down some of the risers. It'll make the, the beginnings of some of the rounds a little bit easier. I went inside. I opened up the first door, and then I opened up the second door, which led into the random box. There was also a Thompson on the wall, so you can either spin the box... You can get the Thompson, or both, whichever one you desire to do. I got Monkeys my first spin off the box. That is always a good thing. However, Monkeys are not as helpful solo as they are co-op, mostly because you forget to use them solo. Most of the time, when you are going to use them, you end up dying before you have a chance to actually pull them out, so it doesn't really work out as well. But yeah, whatever. I still got them. They're good for when you see a max ammo or whatever. That door that I was just pointing at, there's a random box spawn in there. And uh, so in case the mystery box goes away, you can always go in there see if it's in there. I picked up the M1 carbine, and I also got the bar. Going to place these uh, couple bouncing beddies here. Going to run outside again. You never want to stay inside during a round. That is one of the big, big things that do not want to do. You will fail horribly if you stay inside. You've got zombies that drop in from some of the ceilings. You've got uh, zombies coming in from the windows. There are just a lot of places. It's also a little bit darker inside, so 
darkness coupled with random spawning never a good combination so it's always best to stay out here during a round you never want to stay inside regardless of how many people you're playing with I would like to thank Austin uh, he's a friend of mine who I've been playing with he's been in several of my videos so far and we'd actually been trying to beat this co-op for a little while and we were never actually able to do it so one day I just up and decided I'm gonna try this again solo I beat it on my first try so never ended up getting the co-op game so thank you Austin for playing with me for we played it quite a few times never ended up beating it but got me the practice that I needed to actually beat it solo so thank you to Austin for that I'll post his channel link in the description below for you guys to check him out gonna be racking up some more points here and then we'll go open up jug the power I'll show you where quick revive is where speed cola is uh, pack a punch and where you can open up the extra area which is where you'll need to go and eventually open up otherwise you cannot stay here just in this area during the later rounds it is like physically not possible for you to train in here because of the amount of risers that there are it's way too easy to get stuck and I've died countless number of times by uh, just running into the giant train because there, the, there's a ton of risers and then there's also the zombies that are coming in from inside so you've got an insane amount of zombies just popping up out of nowhere makes it very difficult racking up the points here with my BAR double points for the win get quite a few points we'll be going upstairs in a bit I believe. Yep, looks like we're going to be heading upstairs now. We're going to open up this door for 1k. We've got double tap right there. Going to open up this door, and the next door, and the next door. And here we have uh, Juggernog, as well as behind me we've got Pack-a-Punch. The Pack-a-Punch, I should say. We're going to open up the power, which is right here for another 1k. Turn on the power, we've got Speed Cola grabbed the 30 points down below. I'm going to go back upstairs and get uh, Jug. You can see in the corner there you've got Pack-a-Punch. There are a couple more doors here. You can see uh, grenades on the wall there. There are a couple more doors. I believe I'll show you what's inside of those later. They're basically just a couple uh, gun shocks on the wall. Not really uh, a good thing to open up. It's not the best use to your money. For this map, it's really important to conserve your your cash. You really want to beat this map as soon as possible because as long as you stay here, it's just all the more likely that you're going to commit some small error and just completely mess up. And this has happened to me countless numbers of times and it's not something I'm proud of because to be honest, it takes a little while to beat this map. Uh, just not necessarily the map just to beat it once, but to get the rhythm of things and then once you get up to around, I don't know, 10, 11, and then you kill yourself and you have to start over, it's just a real hassle to keep on going back and trying to beat it and then re-beat it and dying and uh, uh, the whole cycle just keeps on going over and over and over and over again. It's not something you want to have happen a lot of times. You can see in that window there we've got the music box, Tom's music box. I've never actually, I, I believe that I've seen like back in the day, what songs were on there. However, I am not up to date on what exactly the songs are on there, whether it's just the custom stock songs or, or custom songs. I, I butchered that right there. Uh, it's always good to toss the monkeys when you've got a max ammo. Um, just gives you some extra points. Basically gives you a free round because all the zombies are preoccupied going after the monkeys. basically uh, killed almost all the zombies just with those three monkeys so that was a nice little touch right there heading back into the box and I believe this is where I get what do I get here double barrel that is not what I thought I was gonna get there are pack punched guns in the box that is something that is very very helpful I eventually grab a pack a punched PPSH, and that really made my day. So, yeah, I, I know you can get the pack a bunch of PPSH. There we go. The Reaper. Now, this gun is totally awesome. 
and I basically stick with the bar and the pack a punch PPSH for the rest of the game. It's a pretty good combination. Not a huge fan of the bar, however, I didn't want to spend the extra cash to swap it out for a different weapon, so it works for me. But as I was saying, you can get pack a punched weapons from the random box. You can obviously get the Reaper, which is what I got. You can also get the pack a punch Thompson. I'm not sure of the name. And then you, there are several others that you can get. Not quite sure what the other ones are. So just have fun with that. There's always a possibility that you can get that. I know uh, Austin got the pack a punch Thompson right off the bat, very first spin of the box. So he was really excited about that when we were playing previous games. As you can see, the Reaper utterly destroys, especially during these early rounds. We're only on round 9 here, so you can definitely see the, the power of the Reaper. I'm going to finish killing off these zombies, and then I'm going to grab the nuke there for another 400 points. Moving right along here. we got 4,500 points. Probably going to be going upstairs and opening up the uh, next area. And then further along in the game, I'll be getting Speed Cola. And then it'll be a straight rush to uh, 30k for the win. So got a got a nice nice video for you. We're more than halfway done. So yeah, if you're having trouble beating The Simpsons, this is probably a very good video to watch because number one, I do beat it, and number two, you can kind of see how it's done solo. Not a whole lot of people actually don't know of any people who have done this solo and recorded it, I should say. I know ex-president has beaten it solo. I, I should mention right there, I got so lucky right there, I got stuck on, I think it was the gate. And the zombies actually were swinging at the spot that I was at previously, so really lucky there. I would have been pretty pissed if uh, I I'd, I'd died right there. Two double points right there. That is a complete waste on my part. And we also have an insta-kill. I don't pick that up wanted to get the extra points there. Leaving one zombie alive, I've got 8k, so we're going to go back upstairs. We're going to open up the outside area, so just follow where I am. Right there we've got, I believe that's the M1 Grand, and we've got the bar on the wall. There is also another gun there. We're going to run through these couple doors here by the picture on the wall. That'll open up the outside area. We have auto turrets on the dresser. I, I was not able to show it as greatly as I would like to, because the zombie was right on my tail. However, in that last room there, on the dresser, you can buy auto turrets for 1500 So keep that in mind. And there we have Quick Revive. Not the room that I just bought Speed Cola in, but the one that I looked in. You can buy Quick Revive. There is also a uh, box spawn location. And finally, the music box. So we can go in here for 1k. I don't actually go in there. However, in there is, I believe, insta-kill, double points, Viable max ammo, you also have uh, the Bowie knife, so quite a lot of stuff in there. There was also the uh, chance to get a free Wonder Waffa, and if you want an idea of how to get that, I've actually done a tutorial on how to do that. I'll put a link in the description for the Wonder Waffa gun, just so you can, you can see how to get that. I don't show it in this video, obviously, because I don't actually need it, but yeah, you can, you can get one very cheap. I think you buy it for like 10 points or whatever. So very easy to get and uh, very helpful if you're playing with more players. However, I was I was pretty set with the bar and the PPSH, so I didn't bother getting that. As you can see, I've sped up these last clips here. It's just a straight rush to 30k and obviously just straight zombie slaying action. Finished off the dog round, which was round 12. We're moving on to round 13 here. I've got about 7,500 points. So, Bible ending is 30k. And we'll just be racking that amount of points up. What I like to do, obviously, stay out here. Don't go inside. Please do not go inside. Whatever you do, don't go inside in the middle of a round. Stay out here. I like to stay on one side. That usually gets a lot of them spawning on that side and then quickly run over to the other side. And I'm talking about the grassy side versus the concrete side, not as in front and back. Just to keep that, uh, keep that in mind, I like to stay on one side, move over to the other side once I've gotten some spawning. That allows them to all funnel through, basically. It's a lot easier to train that way. 
as you can see, you do have to train. This is one of the more difficult maps to train in because of the amount of risers that there are. Uh, the, you can easily get stuck on them, as I've probably mentioned about ten times now in this video. So be very careful about that. I've got 16k right now, so we're a little more than halfway to the required 30k. Just going to be straight training for the rest of the game here. It's very difficult. Um, they spawn really quickly. There's a lot of them. The the FX from when they spawn, the, the dirt cloud that comes up in the air, that can really obstruct your view and make it even more difficult, especially when you've got bouncing Bettys, and when they trigger the bouncing Bettys, Bettys trigger dirt to fly up, as well as the, all, all the dirt from the spawners. So there's a lot of dirt flying everywhere. It, it really obstructs your view, and it can get really intense that way. 26k right here. I've got the insta-kill. Just going to be finishing this off really fast. Almost got a 27k. Double points there. That really helped out a lot. And we have, we've, we've basically won here. So, we've got a cool little intro. I'm, I'm using this Wii as, as of course, there's more people in the video, but there aren't. So, 30k there. Bought the ending. Run inside here. And we've got a cool little artillery plane strike. So that was Simpsons for you guys. Thanks for watching. Glad I finally got to do this and beat it for you. So thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, later.